Verse 8 says, again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. The first point that the text is tailored to teach us is, number one, there is a distorted view of prosperity. There is a distorted view of prosperity. If we but take our time to walk our way through this verse, we'll see three things that yield or that show us that indeed there is a distorted view of prosperity. The first thing we see is, A, the deceiver. The deceiver is Satan. Satan is inherently a liar and deceiver. It is his mission and goal to thwart the plan of God and destroy the people of God. He was the highest ranking angel noted especially for his beauty. But because of the iniquity found in him and his arrogant attempt to overthrow God's kingdom, he was evicted from heaven. According to Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. Satan is cunning and persuasive. But catch this, he's impotent and powerless in the life of the believer. Amen. Satan deals only in deception and has no control over our realities. After he tricked Eve and Adam bit the forbidden fruit, he gained dominion in the worldly realm. He sometimes shows himself for the devil he is or disguises himself as an angel of light. It is important that we understand the character of the deceiver so that we can recognize his fruit no matter how he disguises the deception or the distortion. It says the devil took him, speaking in regards of Jesus, to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the earth. Pay attention. Vision is a popular word in contemporary preaching. But you have to be careful who's showing you what you see. Vision is a popular term in contemporary preaching, but you have to be careful who it is that's showing you what you see. For it says that the devil took Jesus to a high mountain and the devil showed Jesus the kingdoms of this world. Catch it now. Satan takes him there and shows him a panoramic, aerial, quick view of the kingdoms. He doesn't show Jesus the intricate details or the flaws of the kingdoms because Satan cannot deal in substance but only in appearance. <laughs> Satan takes him up, shows him the glory of the kingdoms of the world in a quick, panoramic aerial view he shows him the glories of the world so quickly because he can only deal in perception in appearance and not in substance okay okay for example one day I was on an airplane making his descent into New York and from the sky I mean this city looks gorgeous I mean the lights when it's dark outside I mean you're just like Wow, what a phenomenon. But once you land and walk around the city, you start seeing potholes and dead birds and trash all on the street. Satan gives Jesus an aerial view of the kingdoms of this world. The first thing we see is a deceiver. Not only do we see the deceiver, but B, the domain. The domain. He shows him the kingdoms of the world. Pay attention. God has promised you some things, but Satan has been eavesdropping on the conversation. I'm going to say it again. God has promised you some things, but Satan has been eavesdropping on the conversation. Satan wants to give you a replica, cheap, Knock off version of what God promised you in order to lure you away from being authentically blessed because you fail for the fate. Okay, okay. In the words of my father, you need Bible for that. Turn to Psalms chapter 2. 
catch it now. God has promised you some things. Satan has been eavesdropping on the conversation. So he wants to give you a false, cheaper version of what God promised you to lure you away from being authentically blessed. Psalm chapter 2. Psalm chapter 2. When you got it, say, I got it. Psalm chapter 2, verse 7 says, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, is me capitalizing your Bible? The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Psalms 2 is what we call a messianic psalm. This psalm is foreshadowing, if we would, the Christ that is to come. It is in this psalm, in, chap in chap chapter 2, verse 7, where we read that God tells Jesus, you are my son. This, has a, this is an immediate cross-reference to Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, because it is there where Jesus is baptized, comes up out of the water, the sky opens, the uh, Holy Spirit descends like a dove, and the voice of God says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Catch it. It's a correlation. It's a cross-reference. In Psalms chapter 2, he goes on to say, if you ask me, I will give you the nations as your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. God told Jesus, I will give you the nations for your inheritance. Satan proposes that I will give you the kingdoms of the world. God, in Psalm chapter 2, promises him. That if you ask me, I will give you the nations for an inheritance. You got it. In Matthew chapter 4, Satan says, I will give you the kingdoms of the world. Now from the outset, it may seem like it's merely a matter of semantics or choice of words. But if one was to look uh, uh, meticulously or or uh, with a very, very focused eye at what God promised him and at what Satan proposed him, you will see that they are diametrically opposed. Preach that hall. <laughs> okay, you don't, you don't see it yet. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to show you. God says, I will give you the nations of the earth as your inheritance. I'm building my case. Satan says, I will give you the kingdoms of the world, nations of the earth, kingdoms of the world. There is a difference between the earth and the world. <laughs> okay. There is a difference between the earth and the world. The earth is the physical planet on which we dwell. The dirt, the trees, the grass, so forth. The world, as you see, is the system that governs, governs the spiritually dead. I'm going to show you how it's the difference. You will never, ever hear anybody say Mercury, Venus, Mars, world, Pluto, Neptune. Mercury, Venus, Mars, world, no. Earth, it's a difference. What's the difference? God promises Jesus the earth. Satan offers Jesus the world. The earth is God's natural creation. The world is the system that governs the spiritually dead. The earth is inherently good because God made it, and everything he made in Genesis 1, he said it is. The world is evil. The earth is God's property by right of, of, of ownership. He created it. The, the world is Satan's realm of authority. Amen. Satan wants you to think that it's merely a matter of semantics, but it's a difference. The earth is the substance of the promise, but the world is the appearance of the proposition. Amen. It's a difference. It's a difference. It's a difference, okay? Example, God can promise you a husband or a wife but the, the devil can give you a woman or a man. 
I'm going to say it again. God can promise you a husband or a wife. The deceiver can give you a woman or a man. A wife is a godly woman of wisdom and virtue, anointed and divinely appointed of God to be your helpmeet to propel you to where God wants you to go. A woman is simply a human being with female sexual reproduction. From the outset, they may seem the same, but when you look deeper in the wife, you see substance, but in the woman, you, you don't. God promises him substance. The devil shows him an appearance of what seems to be what God promised him. God can promise you a husband or a wife, but be careful because the enemy can give you a woman or a man.